social anxiety how do I help him be more comfortable when he meets my friends um, so that's honestly that's on him to deal with right you can't change that for him um, right you you got to be yourself your friends have to be themselves and he has to find a way to be comfortable in social situations and social anxiety is something I had to change and, like when I went to a get-together and the only person I knew was a person who brought me Ultimately, I would be by myself because, you know, these people know each other, they'd be talking to each other. So, you know, people would come and talk to me, but I had difficulty starting a conversation. That was my problem, not theirs. That's something I needed to change, not them. So I literally trained myself to go up to people and start conversations when I was in those situations. So, you know, basically what he needs to do is go up and start conversations with people. Now, an opening line is what everybody has in common, right? So everybody knows you. So his opening line to people is, hey, how did you meet Melissa? Um, and so just asking questions. So here's what you tell them. You always have something in common with everybody there, right? So the people there all know you. So pick a, a question you can ask every single one that they can answer. How did you meet Melissa? Um, asking questions means you don't need to think of something to say. So keep asking questions. Oh, cool. What do you do? What do you love about your job? So just keep asking questions. Like everything can lead to more questions. Um, yeah. So, and, and also being up to date on current events. Uh, that way you have something to say about everything. You have an opinion about things. My boyfriend has been going to the gym. I ask him if I can go and he says no. Uh, so just just go, you go, go without him. Go without him. You wanna to go to the gym? Go to the gym. And this is so relevant to my current relationship right now. Wow, I'm always tagging along with my boyfriend. Just finished Fix That Shit. Anxious uh, to mention the healing letters with my significant other. Yes, that's a big exercise. It's, I call it, like it's such a good, flushing of the toilet when you do that healing letter because you get rid of a lot of residual things and it gives you a very organized way of putting everything that's on your mind and heart on the table and just getting it dealt with really good way to to become heard and understood How do I know when my boyfriend is no longer interested in me? Uh, what are the signs? Indifference, right? Indifference. He, he doesn't care to spend time talking to you. He doesn't care to be around you. doesn't care to visit, um, right? So indifference. Uh, what book of yours do you recommend for a new relationship? Uh, so a new relationship I recommend after the first kiss. I recommend two books actually. So after the first kiss and to fix that shit, these two. After the first kiss is gonna help you understand how to deal with like the situations that change, like baby mama, um, you know, him having kids, work, friends, hobbies, pets, family, you know, how do you fit into all this? And then fix that shit is conflict resolution. My uh, husband and I went from 10 years of fighting to five years, not a single fight. Fix that shit is extremely powerful when it comes to conflict resolution. It really helps you get to zero fights in your relationship. Zero, zero fights is like a really good goal to have um, because, you know, when you stop fighting, you increase your opportunity for love to grow between the two of you. Like every time you fight, you pull, you pull in your good feelings. Uh, the longer you go between fights, the more your good feelings towards each other grow. I need to fix that shit next. <laughs> I love that. I need to fix that shit next. 
Uh, I can't get over what my boyfriend did when we were broken up. I know I shouldn't, but it hurts. So that would be a coaching session, love, if you need help changing your mind so you can change your emotions. Not a quickie answer, it is a process. Me and my girlfriend have never fought despite dating for almost a year. Is that a bad sign? Not at all, that's ideal. It's ideal to not fight. Anybody who says it's normal to fight, it's healthy to fight, they don't know what they're talking about. They're saying that because they've never been in a relationship that's so healthy that everything is resolved and nothing turns into a fight because you have good conflict resolution skills. Um, hello, new loves. Hello, hello. Uh, right? So anybody, like, really, the next, like, seriously, those of you who are not fighting in your relationships, <clears throat> who are coming across people who are saying, that's not normal, that's not healthy, everybody should fight. Ask them, how long have you gone without a fight in a relationship? And they're going to say, you know, oh, a month, two months, three months, right? And say, how great would it be if there was zero reason to fight because there was zero conflict and you didn't fight for years? And all you did was continue to grow your love for each other instead of pulling them in in defense because of anger and frustration. She's amazing. Okay, those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture here once or twice. You're gonna get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell when you do that. Say, I just did. I miss my ex, but he isn't good for me. Any advice? Yeah, you quit smoking. When you quit smoking, if you want to quit smoking, if you want to keep quitting smoking, you just don't put that cigarette in your mouth. So block him so that he can't reach out and interrupt your day, interrupt your evolution, interrupt the good time you're having, interrupt your growth, interrupt you headed towards something healthier, interrupt that day where it's such a great day and then you get this text from him and it just takes you down and puts you in a spin. Don't let him do that. Go into your stuff and block him so he can't just randomly decide, hey, I'm horny, let's see if she's gonna open the door to me today and message you and fuck you up. Block him today everywhere take control of your life and don't give him the opportunity to put you in a spin how do you retrust someone who betrayed you not cheating but flirting with others that is a process uh if you want to learn how to do that um then do come take my no more insecurity program i just did love it uh, I feel like conflict is normal, but there are healthy ways to handle conflict in a relationship. Oh, yeah, absolutely. A fight is fire meeting fire. That's a fight. That's an, you know, if it's fire meeting fire, call it what you will. It's fight, it's an argument, right? But fire meeting fire is not healthy. That's when you pull in your good feelings. Um, you can disagree about things, right? My husband and I don't agree on everything, but we don't come at each other in a fight. And sometimes he might be in a poopy mood and be reactive and he comes at me with fire. I don't react to it. So there's no fight. Sometimes I'm in a poopy mood and I'm short and I come at him with fire and he doesn't react to it. So there isn't a fight. Why do you think people keep acting as if they have no control over their lives and relationships? Um, because it's easier to have that dialogue, right? It's too hard. It's easier to say that than get to work. And so these are people who are lazy in terms of managing their own lives. It's, it's so much easier to put everything in someone else's hand and say, if you behave better, I'll feel better. It's your fault. I'm not okay, right? So always putting that responsibility on other people means I don't need to take responsibility for myself. If I have to take responsibility for myself and I'm in an abusive relationship, now I gotta go find somewhere to live. I gotta start all over again. I gotta find a new partner. It's so much more comfortable and easier to stay here. I mean, it's shitty, but I get to complain about it. And, and sometimes, you know, I really, I get a kick out of the sympathy that people give me when I complain about this. And 
that makes me feel cared for and it, it makes me feel better than how my partner is treating me. And as long as I keep this dysfunctional partner so I can complain about my dysfunctional relationship, then I get some attention and it makes me feel cared for. So maybe that's how I'm going to get my attention is by keeping this dysfunctional partner. So there's all these dysfunctional lines of thinking. There's so many different reasons why people will do that. But ultimately what it comes down to is it's easier to complain than it is to act. No More Insecurity Program sounds wonderful. Where do I find this information? So the No More Insecurity Program, there's a button for that in the link tree in my bio. Love your videos. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so you can go check that out. Um, lots of really good information about that program. Um, you know, you can take the No More Insecurity Program. You can just get individual coaching sessions. It's up to you. If you just want individual coaching sessions, uh, there is a coaching button in the link to my bio as well. Hello, love, loves. Hello, welcome, my loves. Happy Wednesday. Happy clean house day. Today's the day my Amy comes, so she cleaned my house today. Which is always nice. Okay, thanks. Sign me up. I need that program. I'm super insecure. I'm going to look this up. Thank you. You're so welcome. It is so, so, so super helpful. If you are insecure, you will benefit so much from this in so many ways. And it's not only going to help you feel better, help your relationship feel better, but help you navigate this world as well. The tools that I teach you, I'm a life coach, a niche in dating and relationships. The tools I teach you apply outside of your relationship. You use this in so many ways to help yourself feel better in so many situations. It's unbelievable. Time when to introduce my boyfriend to my parents. I'm very protective of my family because they get attached. Uh, Should have happened before you kissed him. So how about now? I never thought about feeling cared for. Yes, for, yeah. How do you know if they're right for your relationship to get married? Um, if you're if you're wondering if you don't know, come get a coaching session so I can do an assessment. So, but I mean, the, they have to pass the twelve character traits and no more assholes. Um, this book right here. Uh, make you laugh more than anybody else. Be loyal and hardworking. Practice the three P's, which is protect, profess, provide. Uh, how many times did you and your husband break up and get back together? At least three times. You'll be hearing from me soon. I love it. Lovely. I'm ready for you. Introduce to family before you kiss. Oh my God. I'm going to pick a family member and then just go, here you go. I'll pick somebody who's part of my family now. Especially if you're a parent. Especially if you're a parent. You're going to pick a stranger and then dump them on your kid's lap and go, hey kids, I found us a new family member. Deal with it. Um, your people, <laughs> your people, um, are your vetting process. They are your vetting process. They're going to see things that you don't see. So make them a part of your vetting process. Let them point things out. Let them point things out. I don't like any of my boyfriend's friends because they cheated and divorced any advice. Uh, well, hopefully your boyfriend is different. Um, but you know, we, we don't, we don't pick like your boyfriend doesn't have the right to pick your friends. And you know, if he doesn't like them, you still want to see your friends. And if he doesn't like them, that's his problem, but you don't need him talking about this all the time. Right? It's the same thing for him. Respect his autonomy. Respect his decisions. If you don't, you're in the wrong relationship. I don't have kids. Yeah, so this is for the, I know you didn't say that you have kids, but you know, like as you know, in, in the context of when to introduce somebody 
or uh, to to the people that are important to you um you know especially if you have kids it's so important to know that they get along with your kids before you kiss them so it seems extreme for college age so here's the thing there's there's two ways that we're going to get with people hook up or committed long-term relationship there really isn't anything in between right it's either either i'm getting with you because i want to hook up i just want to have fun or I'm getting with you because I want to commit a long-term relationship. There are people who are 16, 17, 18 who don't want to date to hook up. They want to date for a committed long-term relationship. The vetting process for these two aspects is different. The vetting process here is am I attracted to them and do I trust them? That's it. That's all you need to know. You don't need to look any further than that because this is just a hookup. It's not long-term. When it comes to long-term, there should be more characteristics that you're looking for. Are they honest? Are they hardworking? Are they dedicated? Are they loyal? Are, are they trustworthy? Are they consistent? Are they responsible? And so you need time to find this out. They might say they're all that, but is it true, right? And you need time to see the truth. Don't believe what they say. It doesn't matter what they say. What matters is what they do. Um, so if you're 17 or 20 looking for a committed long-term relationship, the vetting process is the vetting process. And boyfriend's ex-wife took him to the hospital. And he said he couldn't text around her. Weird. Who's there, Charlie? Any advice on how to let go of narcissistic cheating spouse? Yeah. Easily. Uh, if you're having trouble, if you're yearning, if you're pining, if you're missing for that person, get come back, queen. Um, right here. This is the book that helps you get through your feelings after a breakup. Oh, Charlie, can you hear me? There's a dog. cute he wants to run free with the huskies i love the inside joke that's awesome you're so cute <laughs> hello you want to say hi to everybody hi oh you're my good boy i know are you okay are you, oh are you okay yeah are you okay <laughs> Where's your puppies outside? Hey, <laughs> I know. Aww. Uh, this is Charlie. I know, he's adorable. Is there a certain way a relationship has to go? For example, should the first year be the honeymoon? Um, all relationships should be, like it should be easy, right? It does, It doesn't have to be so hard. It's, love your glasses. So these are blue blocking glasses. They block like the bad lights that come off our devices. I did put a link to these in the link to my bio because ever since I started using these, you guys are going crazy. So I, if you want to go get yours, I've got like four, I've got four different styles. Go crazy. Um, but yeah. Uh, okay, so relationships are harder because we're going about it the wrong way, right? We're kissing strangers, hoping for the best. And then we're like, oh my God, why is it so hard? Well, because you didn't know who they were before you got in a relationship. Um, and, and so we have all these difficulties in relationships, starting with the way we actually chose a partner in the first place. So uh, relationships can go a whole lot easier, a whole lot easier. I love your content. We have a great relationship 99% of the time. I love that. Uh, just realize you're twinning with the cat. I know I did this. I did this on purpose. <laughs> uh, 
what changed that made things stick after the first time you and your husband broke up? And the last time, I started, um, like... <laughs> Baby? Baby? Hello? <clears throat> uh, so... When we when we got back together the last time, we still had difficulty. We took a leap of faith. We got married. <laughs> took a leap of faith, and we got married. Um, and we still fought for another two years. And then I started meditating, and that's what changed everything. So we we got back together because you know we really love each other, and fundamentally we knew we could be so good. But it, it, you know, my insecurity played a, a really damaging role in our relationship. It was hard to not be insecure because of his ex-wife's behavior, including offering him blowjobs after we were married. Um, you know, uh, asking if if she can sleep with him, if he would come over and satisfy her after we got together. So definitely, there was like a lot of triggers going on there, um, and uh, you know, so it it, it really took me some time to understand how I needed to be in the relationship but once I started meditating it all started falling into place and then I, I like I, I applied a whole lot of different things that came to me intuitively and uh, and it worked and we stopped fighting and then I taught other people how to do that and they stopped fighting and then I wrote a book and you guys stopped fighting so really what did it was meditation I can't control his friends because I wouldn't like him to do that either. Yes, see, that's a great way to, to, to ask yourself how you should be behaving. Is would I be okay if my partner did this? Um, also questioning why you're behaving certain ways. Am I doing this because I want my partner to do this? Am I doing this as manipulation? Am I insisting on it simply because I do it myself? Thank you. Thank you for your content. You're so welcome. <clears throat> I sound insane. Which part? What 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 is so what's so crazy? What's so crazy? She sounds insane? Who sounds insane? How do I stop arguing about money with my partner? Uh find yourself somebody who's financially responsible and you will stop trying to be a mother. Oh, the ex-wife, I know. Um, so listen, when you choose a partner, you need to choose the right person. Did you get into a relationship with somebody who's financially irresponsible and now you're trying to change them? Because that's not what we're supposed to do. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. I'm glad you clarified that. He was, to mo he was supposed to meet my parents this Friday, but hasn't called or texted me for two days. Okay, love your glasses. Yeah, no, that was seriously some crazy shit. And this is the kind of person who would lose, like, because, you know, she's insecure. And she would, she would absolutely, absolutely, absolutely lose her shit if what she did to me had been done to her, absolutely lose her shit. But, you know, no self-awareness. No responsibility, no responsibility. Uh, what do I think about Tinder? A lot of couples got married after meeting on Tinder. What if they were financially responsible in the beginning, but things have changed now? Then go say, I need to be in a relationship with somebody who's financially responsible. Stop fighting. Stop fighting about it, right? Fighting is like, I'm trying to change you. And they're like, fuck you, right? So stop fighting and have a standard. I want to be in a relationship with somebody I can build a life with. I want to be in a relationship with somebody who's financially responsible. I'm not telling you what to do. You're free to do what you want. But I need to be in a relationship with somebody who's financially responsible. If that's not you, that's okay. I'll find that person. It's, it's up to you to decide if you want to be the man by my side. But I have a definition of who I need for a partner. If you don't want to be the man by my side, that's okay. That's okay. There's other people. I'll go find them. Um, but if you want to be the man by my side, this is who I'm looking for. 
have a standard. Absolutely have a standard. I wish you lived closer so we could trade services. Oh, I do massage. Oh, and be up for that. I appreciate your advice so much. The truth hurts. It does, and I know, and I know, I know. Um, but when I hear something that hurts, in other words, that inflames my ego, gives me the whoosh, um, first thing I do is close my lips. Don't say anything. Second thing I do is ask myself, what was the truth and what I just heard? Isolate what that truth is. Next thing I do is say, what do I need to do so that if I hear this statement again, this is no longer the truth. He was supposed to meet my parents and hasn't reached out or called me. What do I do? Um, do you. Do your thing. Do your thing. Right? Um, don't wait around. Don't wait on him. Do your thing. If he was supposed to, you know, touch base with you so that you guys could do what you're supposed to do, go do what you're supposed to do without him. And come get a coaching session if you want to know how to handle uh you know the rest <laughs> the rest of the situation guys who wants a notification when i go live say i do oh goodness so angry as a child of divorced parents this is not a good rule most people are going to expect a kiss in a few dates yeah, we're not looking for most people. Don't I, I don't know what they don't understand. We don't want most people. Like I keep I keep trying to get people to understand. You don't want the one who wants somebody. You want the one who wants you. You don't want most people. You don't want quantity. You want quality. Boyfriend is always more worried about what others think than what makes me uncomfortable or comfortable. That doesn't sound like somebody who's protective of you. How to deal with the crazy mother-in-law. Husband had lots of trauma from childhood. I'm now her target. You two, both of you, both of you need to ixne the exposure to her. So, uh, and listen, you need to decide for yourself, right? So you need to say, I'm not seeing your mom anymore. I'm not, I'm not taking her phone calls. I'm not seeing her. This is abusive and I will not let anybody be abusive towards me. That's my standard. My standard is I don't let anybody be abusive towards me. I don't care who they are. They don't get to be abusive towards me. If that's the behavior they choose, then the consequences is their exposure to me is limited. You get to make your own decisions, but I'm deciding she doesn't get access to me because I will not be abused. How do you deal with feeling left out of your boyfriend's family life? Uh, come get a coaching session for that love because I do need a lot more information in these kinds of situations. There's a lot of different reasons why something like that is happening and I need that information. Who's gonna win Chantal, England or Denmark? Use your psychic connections, England or Denmark. Is this soccer? Me, I've missed most of your lives the past few times. Okay, those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture here once or twice, you're gonna get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell when you do that, say I just did. Um, go into your settings on TikTok too, on your, on, in your profile in TikTok, click on your settings and then click on notifications um, and then turn on your notifications for live streams for me. And then uh, go into your phone settings and turn on your push notifications for TikTok in your notifications tab. I just did. How can we schedule a coaching session? So you got the bell. You got the bell. Go to my bio, click on the link tree and click on the coaching button. It takes you to a page. There's three steps to follow to book yourself in for a session. Make sure you do that. Dad started being rude to me over not wanting to let me talk, so I walked away and he kept going. Uh, I feel like I can be grumpy when it's that time of the month. It's so hard to manage. Just keep your mouth closed. Keep your, like, like you can feel, you can have all the emotions you want. Just don't vomit, keep your mouth closed. After watching a lot of your lies, I've been communicating better and relationship has been lovely. Thank you. Mwah. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. That's my happy place right there. You got the bell. I 
I say England. <clears throat> Thank you, great advice. I stopped going to her house, but now she texts hor horrible things. Block her. Husband doesn't want to cut her off completely. His prerogative, you can make your own decision. She's texting horrible things. Block her. Block her. And it's just like, why does she block me? Well, mom, like, did you see the horrible things? Block her, block her, block her, block her, and stop reading her messages. If you, if just, just block her. Honestly, like you don't, you don't need to receive those. Um, if she's gonna do that, she doesn't get access to you. Like access denied. You want to be that? You want to be? You want to be that? You want to say that? Access denied. You don't have the right. How do I move on from a relationship? Uh, get come back, queen. This is the book that helps your heart heal after a relationship. Blog button is my new favorite toy. I like this. That was awesome. He said he isn't seeing anyone else, but didn't answer my question, though. My question. Uh, I, so without a coaching session, my love, I can't help you work through an individual thing. Like, I need to unpack. I really need to unpack. I need more details. Access denied. That's right. That's right. I just had this like vision of you like typing out in all caps, access denied, and then sending that to her and then blocking her after that. Ooh. Yes, the block button is very powerful, you guys. Never underestimate the power of the block. Uh oh. And Josh, please send that as tell us the update. Yeah, I wouldn't, I would, I would just quietly block, honestly, like I wouldn't make a production out of it. I would just block. Um, and that way, you know, she, she sort of gets to see the repercussions of her behavior. Do you need to change your love language for anyone? No, but translating is very helpful. Like, like I, I speak, I do my husband's love language for him because I know it's important to him. Um, that's not me changing my love language. Um, and, uh, I accept his love language. I translate his love language. That's still not me changing my love language. How long do you meditate every day? So the average is about 20 minutes. I block on everything possible to cut off any means of communication. Yes, exactly. Never meditated, never meditated before, but I'm not sure where to start. I have a, um, there's there's a button in the link to my bio it says free meditation guide so click on that it's actually a starter page for meditation there's a guide a guide to download um there's a starter track for you to listen to i have a youtube channel with a let's meditate playlist there's a lot of meditation tracks on there that you can dive into so start with that free meditation guide button in the link to my bio I started dating a guy. It's only been a week. We feel crazy about each other. How do I not mess it up? Get no more assholes. Uh, make sure he's a man, not a guy. Perfect. Thank you. You're so welcome. You are so, so welcome. Oh, my glasses get here tomorrow. I'm so excited. Uh, did you get the leopard ones? These ones? <clears throat> I wonder if this is going to fritz what I say. Guys, I'm going to lock off for a second because I'm going to go answer some comments. What book is best for helping past trauma and set boundaries in relationships, getting what you need? Uh, no More Assholes. No More Assholes is the book for that. Um, so I'm going to pop off for a second. I'm going to give you guys one more chance uh, before I leave to set yourself up to get a notification when I go live. Click my picture here once or twice. You're going to get the pop-up and the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell. When you've done that, say I just did. In the meantime, when you know when I pop off, go take some time and go into the link to my bio. You're going to find so much stuff in there. There's a button. There's a coaching button. 
there's a 12 week um, alignment program. This is starting in August. We are getting our physical health, our mental health, and also our goals in alignment over the course of 12 weeks. There's gonna be five scheduled lives a week. There's gonna be more in addition to that, but I'm just letting you know what the minimum is. So five scheduled lives a week. Two of them are workouts, one's a cooking show, one is gonna have like a special guest or a special topic and Q and A's. Another one is gonna be uh, like meditation, manifestations, intention setting. Uh, I'm gonna be releasing some workshops during that time that are included in your package. There's a couple business workshops, there's a couple writing workshops, there's a dating workshop, relationship workshop, a sexy boudoir dance workshop. Uh, you also get a free coaching session every month included in your package. So if you think that's something you want to do, the sign up sheet for that is in the link to my bio. It's the 12 week, um, the 12 week um, alignment program. I'm opening registration for it on July 19th for 24 hours at that date. You can get it for half price. So do add your name to that email list so that you can get that half price on July 19th. Um, there's a free book in the link to my bio. Uh, with the half price, with the discount, it's uh, 1000 1320 for the whole 12 weeks with the free coaching sessions and the workshops, uh, the lives, and, and the lives are all going to be reposted as replays too. So if you miss a live, you get the replay. Um, I've got like experts, all these experts that are coming in to help us, fitness, nutrition experts, um, occupational therapists. I've got a pole dancing expert. Um, so all kinds, all kinds of stuff that's going on with that program. Let me see uh also guys go ahead and grab yourself a freebie if you want free book free meditation guide free long distance manual uh i always do 10 minutes meditation after chantal ends alive to make sure i get it done that's so brilliant my love so brilliant okay i will see you guys soon i'll be back in a little bit